Hello, hope you're having a perfectly balanced day. When Voiceless Voice released earlier this year, it quickly became one of my favourite decks. I took the deck to multiple events around Europe for the Worlds Race and saw a decent amount of success with the deck. With the newest pack, Voiceless is now in Marcedal, which I quite like because I believe the deck is actually a lot stronger in Marcedal than it was in the TCG for two main reasons. We shall take a dive into the deck and then show some gameplay. We're also doing videos for Duel Links and the TCG, so if any of these three categories take your fancy, then consider pressing the big red button. But with no further ado, enjoy! Even though Marcedal has a wonderful crafting system, this deck is incredibly expensive as you can see, so it's important to know what we're doing with it. First of all, why is this deck better in Marcedal than in the TCG? The biggest reason for this is the same reason why I think the deck was better in the OCG, and that is that Voiceless actually benefits from the existence of Maxi. Unlike most decks, Voiceless, if it gets hit by Maxi, is able to put up at least two interruptions while giving the opponent only one or two draws. Most decks have to give the opponent two draws to put up a single interruption under Maxi, meaning that Voiceless not only gets to use Maxi, but it does not get hurt much by the opponent's Maxi. Reason number two is that Voiceless is one of the best decks to use Cypher and Gamma, and unlike in the TCG and OCG, Marcedal has multiple copies of Gamma, which makes it worth playing. Barrier, Sephira, and Pre-Prep are all powerful cards that will force interactions from your opponent before you put a monster on the field, which means Gamma becomes good going first and good going second. The downside to playing Gamma in most decks is having to play the Driver. But Driver is a light level 6 monster that you can use to Ritual Summon. Level 7 would be better, but level 6 means that if Diviner does not resolve, you can then Ritual Summon with Driver and Diviner, and then trigger the other effect of Diviner. Since the card quality in this deck is very uneven, it is not always correct to play 40 cards. In the TCG, it was quite common to play this deck at 45, but I would not want to go higher than 43 in Marcedor, as if we go higher than 43, we then start seeing the Maxi and the Gamma a lot less. The core of the deck is Triple Low, Triple Sephira, Double Skull, Triple Barrier, one each of the other continuous cards in Blessing and Radiance, and then the Fluff cards in One Old Man, and two prayers. You can either play two Cerevus, or one Cerevus and one Pendulum Graph. I like main decking Odd Eyes in Best of One because it helps a lot versus decks like Branded, and in general those games where you do go first. But in Best of Three, it is a card that I would rather have in the side deck. Five Rituals I think is too many. If you want to squeeze the deck to 40, you could play three Rituals and cut Odd Eyes, but only having three Rituals will make the Old Man and the Grave Effect of Prayers a bit worse. The sub-engine is Diviner and Trias. This is a one card combo because Diviner dumps Trias, and then Trias contribute Diviner to then trigger that other effect of Diviner to pull low from deck to then go into Barrier, into Sephira, and then you do your whole combo. There are other engines you can play in this deck, like Nadir Servant and Branded Fusion, but both of these engines are a bit weird due to the ban list, and I'd rather have a space for more hand traps. For consistency, we have free pre-prep because it's super good, as well as prosp and extrav. The rest of the deck is filled by hand traps and friends, aside from two called by. I've never liked cross out in voiceless because the deck eats most hand traps anyway, but called by seems decent enough going second in this current meta against stuff like Phantom to main deck anyway. Magnamute is great in this deck because it can search any of these three, or more importantly, search for Sephira. And if you play against a deck like Branded or Ubel, then you also have the option to search for Druiswurm. Bold Drake is also good, as it pairs well with Gamma, and it's even better with Nibiru. Nibiru is very good in Voiceless, I'm only not playing it due to space in the deck. I think the card is not amazing against a smart Ubel player, but if you compare it with another hand trap, it will of course never be horrible. Veiler is also good, I'm not playing it due to deck space, as Gamma is better in this deck. If I did have space, I would include Nibiru before Veiler, as Nibiru can be used as the full tribute for a ritual, so it works quite well with pre-prep even though I do play Extravagance. My extra deck is not sculpted around it, 
since we only have a 1. I think the only card you need in multiples for Extravagance is Dynamondo, as both effects of this card are very very good in this deck. But do be careful summoning this card turn 1, because it can just lose to Cool by the Grave. The other main notable things are Arclight and Entus as additional options to send with Diviner. There's also Chaos Angel to make with Trias and Lo, Axel into Fleur to make with Gamma and Driver, Meteor Burst to summon off of the Pendulum Graph, and I play two Link Wands, but I do not play the Secure Gardener combo, because I find that those combos normally are not too important. The rest of the extra deck is just general stuff for utility. This is a very fun deck if your preferred playstyle is mid-range leaning control. Unfortunately though, this deck costs a lot of ultra-rare craft points. Enjoy the gameplay. Barrier into... Sephira. Because normal summon low is kind of awkward if they implement there. Dump Briz. We go for the autos. Isn't it? Yeah. Then the fear effects. Skull with the low. And we can go effect of low. Skull doing it in this order to play around Bell. And the skull will search for a low. And then we'll come back. And then low will get us a blessing. It doesn't look like much, but then we can just blessing on their turn, and then um, after we do that, we can then pull back the open grave and then get the trap that way. Yo, Camaro, okay. Um, that's cool. This is a matchup where you definitely want to have the Odd Eyes, because if you only have Sravis, you won't do too much of that. Patchwork. Ooh. That is a scary one. Um, I feel like I probably have to... It's fine, right? Because we have to commit to someone before doing the, the patchwork. So I guess like if they had a second way to fuse, we could have set a monster to then play into my blessing a bit better. But of course they might not have that. Chimera is like on paper, really consistent, but in practice, isn't. <laughs> chain Chimera Fusion, uh, I kind of want to chain the Odd Eyes on this. Hmm. Or, I think rather, actually, if it activate Poly, there's an argument to um, Chain Trap pop on field. Because then I can prevent the Guardian Chimera guessing a pop. That's kind of weak, though. The, the good hands where you open up like a fusion spell and a way to get to engine. Like literally play through every hand trap. So we know they have, well nothing actually, only the chain, right? Yeah, I'm going to chain the trap to pop the gazelle here. Which means that it can't get to Guardian Chimera. That's like the main threat is the Gunning Camaro here. Okay, Sol and I and Chain and do Birth Met, they get to then dump and search. They've been being Nightmare Magician, okay. That is interesting. Hmm. 
Surely, like, if we had tap was a better thing to dump there, right? Camera fusion, um... I mean, yeah, they're still knights, so... We just hit we can't chain block we got any camera, I guess. What is that? The big one. Diabolica. If a fiend monster accept Diabolica sent to your graveyard by card effects, um, you can summon this card from your graveyard. Um, but, or hand. If sent to grab by card effect, you can target a few monsters to the graveyard and to your hands. Ooh. Okay. So now they get to chain block the um the gun camera. Yeah, we let this one, one resolve because if a camera resolves here and pops two, um, and they pop the skull, then we can just float with the present grave. Sorry, pop one. I mean, yeah, it was draw two, pop one. So yeah, we did not have a need to use a skull and a guardian there because we can just float into a new one anyway. And even if they, say if they pop prayers to an attack for low, they can just, um, um, they can't stop when they get because we have too low on builds. But alpha makes a pretty big difference actually, okay. Yeah, we do have to negate that one. And then, what if we add back to hand off of the, that card? Uh, if we added back, um, yeah, we can only, only attack a skull here. Oh, we added back this, did we? No, it's not a fiend. Back chain to hand. Okay, okay, okay. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So you can see that even with like a really um, a ball that didn't look very threatening. Um, the like regular border voices is so layered with blessing, but it's so hard to make a big push through. Even with like a deck that has a high ceiling, like Chimera. Then, uh, just go poke, 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 right? Not really a need to go for Typhon. Nah. Boop. And thankfully, time is not real. Yeah, we had a lot of stuff we can do there. Thanks to Blessing and Barrier and Spirit and all, all that. And there we go. GG. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully, you enjoy it. Have a perfectly balanced rest of your day, and adios. Mm -hmm.